Hey guys, Ken here from Think Trade Profit. In this video, I want to dig deeply into Fidelity's price improvement. So on stock trades, periodically, because Fidelity doesn't sell their order flow, they give us better prices on some of our executions. So after researching this yesterday and today, I dug into it more than I have before, and I answered some questions that I didn't realize I should have asked a long time ago. I'm going to share that information with you, so stick around. By the end of this video, I'm going to give you what I think is a very fair estimate for what you can expect to make and how often you can expect to make money on Fidelity's price improvements in your stock trades. So uh, just to recap, for those of you who may not be familiar with price improvement, where do you find it? Where do you see it? So the first thing you do, the easiest place to see it historically is in the web app. So log into fidelity.com, go to your account, and go to the balances tab. So once you're logged into your account and you're at the balances tab, scroll down to the bottom of the page. What you're looking for is the link to commissions and price improvement summary and select that. So selecting that link, it opens up a little pop-up and this has got your commissions and price improvement summary. So you can see this here for one of my accounts uh, and year to date, uh, the total price improvement is actually $4,000. Um, and there's some stuff about last year and the previous 12 months, but what you really want to look at, and everybody has this available to them if they have recent executions, you want to open up view recent orders with price improvements. This is the best place to see historical price improvements because what they do for everyone is they store the last hundred trades that you got a price improvement on. So there's really good data here and it's always changing. Tomorrow it'll update with today's trades. So it's one day behind, but as everything uh, settles tonight, tomorrow's trades or today's trades will be in here uh, tomorrow. So they show you your last hundred trades and it's a, uh, a little window screen and then you can page through it and there's 10 pages. So I never really dug into this before. I knew it was an advantage of Fidelity. I thought it was cool. I knew they didn't sell their order flow. That was important to me. But I went ahead for the first time ever and I took all this and I copy and pasted it each page into a spreadsheet. And I did a little bit of analysis. I was like, okay, what am I getting? And most of these trades uh, for the last 100 trades are Facebook. I trade a lot of Facebook. It's one of my favorite stocks. So I did some number crunching to see how I did in Facebook over the last 100 trades. So let me share that with you first. So with my last 100 trades of Facebook, um, I had position sizes from 100 shares to 400 shares. And I added up all the shares that they had listed there. So every trade that was listed in that section in the Fidelity uh, online app, they all had price improvements. Those are only trades that had price improvements. So I added up the total number of share sizes um, for all the trades and uh, I did the math and it was like about 20,000 shares, $360. Um, so I did it on a per share basis. And basically the the price improvement for those hundred trades averaged out to be almost two cents a share. So it doesn't sound like a lot. This may not excite a lot of, a lot of people, but from a scalping perspective, two cents a share is really good. Um, the markets are great right now. The movement's great. I mean, these markets are extraordinary and it's not going to be like this forever. But if you can find a stock that you can trade and get an edge of two cents a share and you do enough volume, you can make a living on it. There's no doubt. So this surprised me a little bit. I was surprised at how high it was and I never did this before uh, because the amounts are really small on a per trade basis. It's two dollars, four dollars, five dollars. And I used to glance at them and you can see them in your account. It doesn't really excite you. And Facebook's pretty risky stock too. Um, so I wanted to dig deeper into this because I started thinking, what if I wasn't trading Facebook? What if I was trading something with a smaller spread that I could trade a little bit more flatly, manage my risk really well, and take advantage of Fidelity's price improvement as much as possible? So looking at Facebook, it has some characteristics that I like. Um, it trades a lot of volume. It trades, uh, lately it's been 25 million shares. Um, kind of pre-coronavirus and that kind of thing. It was more like 19, 18 million shares a day, but it's gotten a lot more popular. It's a lot hotter. It's one of the FANG stocks. Uh, it's got a beta of, of 1.2 and a spread of about 4 cents. That's an estimate. I know it can be a lot worse. Um, generally, I only trade from like 10 to 3.30. So after that kind of price discovery in the open, Facebook calms down a little bit. But I just threw that out there as an estimate, about a 4 cent spread. Um, and that's the price improvements that we got per share on the last 100 shares. So 
I haven't really traded Micron. I'm familiar with it, but it was another stock I was looking at to scalp um, a while back. I traded it just briefly in April because it had some of the same characteristics. I wanted stocks with a certain beta. I wanted something around 15 million shares, that kind of thing. Um, and I wanted a decent spread. So what I set out to do was trade Micron. It basically traded with a penny spread. I looked at it yesterday. I threw a couple small executions out and one of the price improvements I got was half a cent. It was, it was a small lot, it was 100 shares, but I got 50 cent price improvement on 100 shares. Um, that basically means they gave me half a penny. The spread's only a penny, so they literally cut the spread in half for me, and that intrigued me. Um, so what I had set out to do today was to trade Micron as much as I could, as kind of keep the risk to a minimum, keep it really flat, and just get some executions and get some data. What is it like with a stock like Micron, which only has a penny spread effectively? Uh, what kind of price improvements do I get there? So I didn't quite make 50 trades. Uh, I only got about 32, but I wanna share those results with you. Okay, so here is a two day, one minute of Micron today. So this is how it acted. Um, little context, here's volume weighted average price uh, on a one minute chart from TradingView. So um, it started the day a lot weaker like most of the market and um, it got stronger as we got into 11 o'clock and then it was above volume weighted average price VWAP for most of the rest of the day. So part of the reason uh, for this is why I didn't get to 50,000 shares. I only got about 32,000 uh, uh, shares traded. So I got 32 trades with at least 1,000 shares and I had some small partial fills and that kind of thing. I was really just trading it not to lose money and try to get the data together. But with that, um, just so you know, in Active Trader Pro, your price improvements are here too. So these are the the MU trades from today, and the price improvements are in here, and you can see them and expand your executions. So this is kind of a sneak peek at uh, all the executions I did. I traded from about 9:50 to lunchtime to about 12, and then I traded a little bit. Um, after one o'clock and that's where I started to there was just so much risk it was getting so much stronger basically my goal with this to not give it too much deep thought was I had a short thesis and I was just going to short it and almost every trade on here is a short trade and I just short 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 try to cover it small profit or small loss that kind of thing so how did I do so this is a section of trader view uh, TraderView is a, a web application that's a subscription service. There is a free version that you can try out. If you trade a lot, if you have hundreds of trades and that kind of thing, I highly recommend it. It's worth it. Uh, there's different pricing plans. There's a, um, a $29 pricing plan and a I think it goes up to $39 or $40. But I have the silver plan. I'll put a link in the description below. If you use that link and you decide to pay for it or sign up, it does give me a little bit of a credit and it'll give you $10 off your first month too. So take a look at it. Use the free version at least. Basically, you can take your trades from Fidelity and you can export them from Fidelity's web app online. There's a feature if you go into active activity and orders and you uh, look at today's trades, you can export them to a um, CSV or an XLS file. And then you can import them into TraderView and you can get a lot of really cool stats. So I did that here. Um, so the volume here, this is uh, just for MU, Micron, just for today. So this volume shows both sides of the trades. So I did 64,000 shares, but really when we do this math on a per share basis, we're just talking about 1,000 shares in and out. So if I buy and sell 1,000 shares, uh, as far as a per share kind of price improvement profit, um, that's just 1,000. So 1,000 buy and sell is one trade, that's 1,000 shares. So really, um, for all computational purposes, the volume is about 32,000, uh, 32 and, and change. There were 35 trades. Yeah, some of these are um, fractional. I got some partial fills and I just closed those out. So there's a little bit of a profit factor here and there's some rounding, so this doesn't really tell you much. But you can see my win, win percentage and my losing percentage. This average holding time, uh, I was kind of miffed by this because my average, I was trading really quick and when you hover over these it gives you a little tool tip and it shows something a little bit more granular which I like. So my average holding time for winning trades is 23 seconds, my average holding time for losing trades is 39 seconds, and there's maximum consecutive wins was 4, maximum consecutive losses was 2. And this is average position uh, um, 
um, maximum favorable excursion. So that's like on a thousand share lot basis, so about, um, or no, I'm sorry, it's one and a half cents. So on a thousand shares, $15 would be about one and a half cents. And then the maximum adverse excursion, or the average MAE maximum adverse excursion is minus 14. So the kicker is, I did have one bad losing trade today uh, that got away from me. So I'm gonna show you my PL. Don't laugh, don't be too critical, because this isn't what's most important. I'm gonna show you the price improvement totals, and that's what's most important, because I didn't trade this that well. So all in all, um, TraderView has me making about 100 bucks today. Um, actually, I made just a little bit less than that. Um, the largest loss, this was the one that hurt. So you can drill down on these. My largest gain was uh, six cents. My largest loss was, it was like 11 cents. Um, and you can look at these trades and TraderView is great. It's got all kinds of little things. Basically, this was an 18 second trade. You can see these two fills. Um, so 11.28.42 to 11.29. In 18 seconds, I lost 11 cents. The biggest loss today, and it was really big. It was abnormal. Um, and you can look at all the trades for the day in here. TraderView is great. I really like it because I trade a lot and I like to kind of massage these stats and figure out where I can do better and that kind of thing. And really I didn't do too bad. Most of the losses were three and a half cents or less. So my PL wasn't that great, but what was the math on the price improvements? So I did the math from here. Like, um, here's how I traded. Um, I enter with a limit order on the bid or the offer and I get executed there and then I exit with a market order. I've talked about this in some of my other videos when I talked about um, the directed trade keys and how I set them up. But nonetheless, um, what I believe is that market orders are the only ones that get price improvements. I don't have any trades from today from a limit order that got filled where I got a price improvement, none. But market orders um, had a high percentage of price improvements. And that goes the same with what I had to look at historically for Facebook trades, they were all market orders. So I'd never noted, really noticed that before. I figured there were price improvements on all kinds of orders, but I believe until further data proves me wrong that market orders are the only one where you're gonna get a price improvement. If you're using a limit order, they're going to fill you at the price. So uh, I took all the stats and I took all the price improvements. The best price improvement I got on a thousand shares was 20 bucks, which was two cents. And that was early in the morning. It was 9.57. So the market was pretty wild at that point in time. I remember it. I usually give it till about 10.15. So that was the, I think it was the only, tw no, I'm sorry. That wasn't the only $20 price improvement. Okay, I take that back because I got one at 10.38 as well. So the best price improvement I got today on a thousand share lot was $20, which is two cents. So think about this. That's less, that's more than the spread. The spread's only a penny effectively. And I know that some of my covers and exits were not good, meaning the stock was trending down and I was just covering because, wow, I've got a profit. Let me close this and get another execution. And they still gave me a two cent price improvement. Um, and it happened at 1038 as well. But there are a lot of um, $10 and $5 and smaller. Um, so there's some weird stuff in here to figure out. But basically, if you do all the math and you come down to it, this is how bad I traded the stock today. Uh, for all my trades today, like I said, uh, there were 32,269 shares of, a, you know, a thousand lots or less in and out. The price improvements totaled $173.97. So I didn't even trade the stock uh, flatly, essentially without price improvement, right? Because I only ended up net about 91 or something after FINRA fees. But these were the price improvements reported to me by Fidelity. And what it came down to was out of the 35 market orders that I used to exit my trades, 27 out of the 35 had a price improvement. So it was a 77% chance for a price improvement. And the average for this, so if you do the math on this, the average for this dollar amount divided by every trade, because this has got, uh, remember, this has got um, some trades in it that did not get price improvements, but we'll average those in. The average price improvement per share for what I traded today was about half a cent. Now, some of you, this may not excite you, but I think a half a cent edge or this half a cent kind of guidance that Fidelity is returning to you on a stock that has a penny spread is pretty good. So how good do you have to be to make money, say in Micron, in these current market conditions when you get this kind of help? Because that's what it comes out to be. On all the shares traded today, um, I got a half a penny of help 
essentially from Fidelity, buy price improvements, and the stock's only got a penny spread. So I think that's pretty compelling, and I'm gonna dig more deeply into this, uh, because honestly, this was pretty stress-free, other than the fact that I was trying to do a little too much. I was watching other stocks, I was watching and trading Facebook, and I was trying to do this, and I wasn't really familiar with this stock. But there's something here. Um, honestly, I think part of this is the current market conditions. I don't think you could take every stock that has a penny spread and trade it and get this kind of price improvement. I think the motion and kind of the way that price was floating through levels um, across a three or six cent range really helped out, but it wasn't that hard to limit your losses. I mean, if you really wanted to be a stickler, just trade it all day long and you could have literally just clicked the button and made sure you didn't close out anything more than three cent loss. You could have, um, and you probably would have done better than me because my winners weren't that big. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I'd love to know what you guys have in your history. Dig into it, go into the web app, look at your price improvements, look at the stocks you trade a lot, and see what's there, because this is pretty surprising. For a stock that has a penny spread, they gave me a penny here on a thousand shares. This wasn't a hundred shares or what have you. They gave me 20, uh, they gave me two cents twice. Um, there's another 10, there's another half cent. But that's what it averaged out for all the shares traded, even the ones that didn't get price premiums. That's pretty good. That basically says to me, hey, Micron in these conditions has a half cent spread. So how good of a trader do I have to be to grind it out and stay profitable in that? I'll show you my equity curve too in TraderView real quick. TraderView's got this cool journal feature and, and I put pictures and stuff and stats in it. Um, I put here's what the spies were doing, here's that VWAP, that's what I showed you before, here's Micron's uh, chart for the day, kind of put what some of the indices are doing, but here's, I was never down. So with price improvements and that help, uh, I did really well into 1045.11, I was up a little over $140 at one point, and then I got that 11 cent loss. So anyways, that's what I wanted to share with you. I think it's really interesting, um, and I think it's another benefit of trading with Fidelity for all the things that we fuss about and the things that they don't have and the things we don't like in Active Trader Pro. Um, this is nobody else is doing this. You can read about it on their website. I'll put a link to that below about price improvements and, and how they compare with Schwab and TD Ameritrade and that kind of thing. But this is a big deal, especially in the markets we are now, because I didn't work that hard to to make this money and I think I could have done a lot better just being a little bit more restrictive. I wouldn't have traded some of those uptrends. I just wanted as many executions as I get to share with you guys and get, get some data going. But that's it. I'm going to leave it with that. Let me know uh, what you guys find out when you dig in there and look at your own price improvements. I'm really curious. I think that I'm not really surprised. I think that this price improvement was about a quarter of what Facebook's was. So Facebook's was just under two cents a share. This one turned out to be about half a cent a share and their spreads are a ratio of four to one. So maybe it's spread related and activity related. Um, I think to make this viable, you have to have something that really trades. You can't trade something that doesn't trade that much. So I'd probably say, I don't know, five million, 10 million shares or more. Don't take the most popular stocks, but take something that kind of sits off the mainstream. Like Micron is not the most popular semiconductor. AMD, Nvidia, Qcom, all those stocks, they have the limelight, uh, Intel, um, and they trade a lot too, but this one's kind of in the background. So I'm thinking that the algo component isn't as at a high level on Micron as it is on some of the other stocks. And that's why I picked it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Good luck out there, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thanks.